G'day, my name's Gordon Dedman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. In today's episode, we're going to be having a look at a couple of different ways of setting up an emergency or weather blanket. So stick around and I hope you enjoy the episode. All weather emergency blankets have been around for quite a while and they're quite popular. And the reason for that is that they're very versatile. They can be made into shelters, they're ground sheets, they're picnic blankets, they're um, designed to keep you warm and wrap you up as a, 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 in a blanket. They've got a lot of different uses. The one I'm going to be using today is uh, the all weather blanket which is made by Survival Supplies Australia. Uh, Grabber also make a good one from overseas, but generally they're pretty hard to get in Australia So survival supplies Australia stock these and they are a really good piece of kit They come in many different colors. I've just got a green one, but for emergency signaling use You'd probably want to get an orange or red one and what they are is It has a plastic outer and on the inside that's the aluminized mylar, which was developed by NASA originally for the space shuttle. So what this does, this reflects um, up to 80% of your body heat back to you. So very, very warm. It also reflects that body heat away from you or reflects sunlight away if you happen to have that on the outside. So this can be used as a ground sheet. It can be used as a blanket to wrap yourself in. And it also has grommets in the corners that are reinforced grommets that can be used to tie this up as a shelter in a, in a couple of different configurations. And that's what we're gonna have a look at today. So in order to erect the all-weather blanket as a shelter, all you need uh, is about seven or eight metres of parachute cord, two short pieces of bank line, it doesn't matter what size, or any other cordage smaller than the diameter of the parachute cord, two small sticks to be used as toggles, and two stakes that I've just made. And with that, we can make a couple of different configurations depending on the weather. So we're gonna have a look at the lean-to configuration first. Now firstly, we need to select our shelter site appropriately. So like always, we look up, we look down, we look all around. We don't want to set our shelter up underneath deadfall. So there should be no deadfall in the tree above. We want a nice flat area so that we can get a good night's sleep. We don't want to set the shelter up um, on the top of a hill where it's windy or right at the bottom where the cold air sinks to that point. We don't want to set it up on game trails where um, a thoroughfare for animals as well as or near ants nests or other biting insects. We want to erect our shelter near where there's water so we can we can get water if we need to but at the same time we don't want to be too close to water because water harbors mosquitoes and in the northern territory the things like crocodiles in the water so no closer than 50 meters um, to a water source and as well as that we want to set site our shelter near wood because if there's wood around we've got um, wood for a fire and if we're building a natural shelter we'd want those for resources to build our shelter with so siting your shelter is very very important so the height we want to um, tie this lean to is we want it roughly around sternum height or a little bit below and that is and the angle we want is roughly between 45 degrees and 55 degrees now that's to give us good watershed tension and angularity ideally to shed that water and um, it gives us plenty of living space underneath 
Now these trees are a little bit close together. I would have liked them a little bit further apart, but it, it doesn't matter, it's still fine. So what we need to do, the first knot is going to be our Siberian hitch, which we have looked at in other episodes at a roughly round chest height, sternum height. Then we're going to open up our shelter. Grab my toggle. And what I'm going to do is put a bite. I'm going to put a bite through that grommet. And then I put the toggle through the bite that I've created on the other side. Keeping that tension, I'm going to keep that tight. I want the ridge line so the ridge line to pass in front on this side, and put another bite through this other grommet. And put that through, and then pull that tight. And as you can see that's holding up there. The trees are very close. If I tie this off here, it's going to be a little bit messy um, for you to see. So I'm just going to go around this tree and tie it off to this other tree. And I'm just going to use an adjustable prussic or adjustable knot. And the reason for that being, if I do a taut tarp hitch, it's going to put too much pressure on these and it can rip the eyelets out. So we don't need that much pressure. So I'm just going to go over here and do an adjustable hitch or adjustable prussic. slide that up to the tension I want. It also gives me a hanging line to hang anything I need from it. Right, after we've got that, we can now stake out the bottom. So before I peg this out, I need to make two small loops. I'm just going to do an overhand knot, which just forms a loop like that. Then I, all I need to do is put one end through the grommet and with another toggle I put that out at the correct tension. I'm going to have to test and adjust here. I need a mallet or something to hit these in with. And then do the other end. An alternate way of attaching this is simply to put the knot through like that. And we're going to make what's called just a, a lark's head or cat's paw, just like that. Just putting the loop one end through the other. Do it again. Put the knot through the grommet and then the knot through the other end of the loop, just like that. It's a lark's head, also known as a cat's paw, and that I don't need a toggle. Now the angle I'm hammering these at is 45 degrees. A lot of people get this wrong. If I hammer it here, down here it's going to sag. If I hammer it there, it'll sag. It must be 45 degrees. The corner points to where I need to hammer. Make sure the stake is pointing in to the center, angled inwardly. Going to come back over here, test and adjust. This needs to be walked out to get the correct angle. You can see that tension is, is correct now. 45 degrees. The, the tension needs to come this way. You can see any sags mean this thing. I'll, I'll walk this other end out and that should be right. There we go. And you can just test and adjust as you need to. So we've got a nice rigid shelter. It's good good watershed at this angle. And that's about the angle you do natural a natural shelter with thatching as well. Now we've got our shelter erected. 
nice and quick. So we've got, I'd say it's about 50 degrees, that angle. I've now got a space that I can stay in and get dry um, in, in weather. I would put down something on the ground to get myself off the ground because we don't want to lose heat through conduction to the cold ground. Um, or you, if you've got your sleeping kit with you when you're um, sleeping out, you can, you can use that, whatever you've got. But if not, you could improvise something if you need to be shoving a garbage bag with leaves and things like that. And we've looked at that in another episode as well to get you off the ground. And they can be very, very comfortable. But the, where these come into their own is when we have a fire in front. Because what happens then in colder weather, the radiant heat from the fire will reflect off the back. I can feel the heat bouncing off my body here. It is quite warm. And in cooler weather, I'd actually like, a, I prefer the lean to option because it, let, it allows me some breeze. If it was really hot weather, I'd have the shiny side, the reflective side facing out to reflect that heat away. And this might be in an area where there are no, there's no shade. And if there's no shade, I'd want this silver side on the outward side to reflect the heat away. Ideal if you had two, having separation with two different layers would keep you even cooler. And that's ideal if there's no trees, you want two layers. But for our purposes, with the fire, I want to keep warm, I would have um, the, the, the fire's radiant heat would be reflecting off the back and into me. And if I'm off the ground, I'm pretty comfortable. That radiant heat being on a slight elevation here, that, ra that heat's going to rise up. So um, very, very simple to erect. It can get me out of the weather very, very fast. And if you've got someone else, they can erect one opposite to this. You can have a central fire heating both shelters and that radiant heat bouncing between the two reflective surfaces. And it works really, really well. So this is the lean to configuration. The second configuration using an all weather blanket is what we call the, uh, the plow method. And what that consists of, we've got the same knot, we have an, um, a Siberian hitch attached to the tree, and we have, say, about a 30 to 40 degree angle down to another stake down the bottom here. That could be another tree. I've just done it for, um, just for demonstration purposes, as it doesn't really matter. So I could actually have another line to another tree and just, and, and and stake the end down as well as I'll show you in a minute. It doesn't really matter. But this is gonna be my ridge line on the inside. So it's roughly 30 to 40 degrees here. And what I'm going to do is place the shelter over diagonally. And what I'm going to do at the top here is with Another bit of cord, I'm going to tie an overhand knot with the two loose ends, once again forming a fixed loop, like that. And then I'm going to make a prussic. The prussic is going to go over the top, one, two, and then pulled through the hole. We've actually looked at this in another episode. So that makes what's called a sliding prussic. Then all I need to do is place our knot through our grommet again and there is our peg and that goes straight through the hole once again just like that and that's going to give us a fixed point that we can pull against. I'll slide that up to the tree and you can have this at the, whatever height you like, I might actually make that a little bit higher. Now what I need to do is just stake out the corners. I'm going to stake the back one out first actually. And that's going to take that to the ground. Or I could just tie that to that ridge line. I don't have to stake that. I pull that out evenly to there, once again pulling 45, then we do the same this side, pulling it out 45 degrees, 
So there's another configuration of this all-weather blanket. This is in the plough configuration, so it looks like a bit like a, a, a plough that ploughs fields. And what this is, this is more for inclement and cold weather because it's a smaller space, which means that I can actually feel the reflective nature of this bouncing my body heat around. So this is for a much colder climate. And of course I need to get myself off the ground to prevent heat loss through conduction to the cold ground. But it actually works really, really well. And particularly if I have a fire in the front here, having all that radiant heat reflecting back in here, it's just going to bounce around it. Yes, I have to sleep in the fetal position, but that's no problem. This is an emergency shelter and we're trying to get out of the weather. So this does this quite well. As I said, it's very, it's much it's smaller. So it's the idea is we want to keep out as much body heat in here as possible. So that's why it's um, configured this way. We have our ridge line down the bottom. We could have tied it to a tree. It doesn't really matter. But um, for cold weather, this is another configuration of the all weather blanket. And this is the plough configuration. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this short episode on a couple of different ways to set up an all weather emergency blanket. If you like these episodes, please subscribe to the channel. We also have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. And if you'd like to do one of our courses, go to our website, www.bushcraftsurvivalaustralia.com.au and check out the courses that we have on offer. My name's Gordon Dedman. Thanks a lot for watching.